Hello everyone, Joe from Styling Cycles here. Uh, one of the distinctive features of our frames is, is the head tube gusset. So we have a plate head tube gusset. So I'm gonna give you a little, a little chat today, a little talk today about why we have that gusset, what it does, uh, and what the alternatives are, and what other things we've looked at. Really, all our frames have this, this head tube gusset. It's quite distinctive because we've, kind of for aesthetic reasons, we've laser cut a couple of little bird details in, which looks really nice. Uh, adds a bit of nice detail to the frames. So the, the purpose of the head tube gusset is to add some strength to the forward section of this frame. So the head tube is really important in terms of strength. It's got a big long lever in the forks hanging off the front. Any impact on the fork forces is, is multiplied by that lever, making the head tube quite a, quite a vulnerable part of a frame design. So it's very important that we have strength here. Steel frames such as this and, and aluminium tubular frames historically there tends to be some kind of strengthening feature at the front and the two main ways of doing it one is to have a, a plate gusset like this which joins the top tube and the down tube together and the other way is to have a little local doubler so you have a little extra section of material here uh, that increases the strength. So the the plate doublers is quite easy to understand it, it essentially means you've got more material so you've got twice as much material here where the higher stresses are and the little plate the forces the bending forces track into the plate and then some of it goes through the gusset so it reduces your stresses so it's sort of easy for people to understand how they work whereas these plate gussets work in a slightly different way um, essentially what they do is as this head tube is bending the, the two tubes, the top tube and the down tube, are trying to bend as well. And a, a good way to show this, oh. let's have two, two rulers. So top tube, imagine the top tube bending and then the down tube bending. So as the, it's quite tricky to show, but imagine as the, as the head tube bends, both the top tube and the down tube would bend. And they bend independently. So you have, if it's bending this way, you'd end up tension on the top of the down top top tube and compression on the bottom they're, they're independently bending like this you now need to think about the way an i-beam works so i-beams are used in lots of structure you know, a steel beam with a, a plate on top a web across the middle and a plate across the bottom the way they work is by having a web between your your two bending beams you essentially mean that the whole section bends as one so instead of having two bending separately you make the whole thing bend as one big section. It's quite tricky to show with these rollers, but, and by doing that, you increase something which is called the second moment of inertia, which is the, the, the parameter used to describe the strength of something in bending. So by making them bend together, they're much, much stiffer, they're much, much stronger. So instead of having a beam where it's got tension in the top and compression in the bottom, you essentially make the whole top tube in tension and the whole bottom tube in compression and it massively changes how stiff and strong this is. Essentially, this is what our head tube gusset is doing. It is tying together the top tube and the down tube so that they, they bend as one, they act as one big section. Um, we kind of have this, this design where they've got long legs pulling it in because the load is coming along the down tube and it has to track into the, the plate. If you have a sudden angle, then the force would have to change direction quickly and you'd end up with a stress razor. So you have, we have these long legs, which acts as a way of gently uh, bringing the load into the gusset. And the same at the top, at uh, all the various points. So we slowly track the load into the gusset. And then this little short section is the bit that acts as the web stiffening it up. So that's kind of the theory. We actually very early on did some, some analysis work on this. So we did some finite element analysis. Um, even though I'm kind of capable of doing that myself, I actually got a subcontractor to do that, partly because we didn't have the software and we couldn't afford the right software. We did a model of a front section of a frame and we looked at a solution where we put a little doubler and a solution where we put um, a plate gusset. And the plate gusset was a much more efficient, a much stronger way of strengthening the hedging. So that's why we've gone with this solution. It also adds a, an, an aesthetic element. I really like the plate gusset. I know it. Some people don't like it, there's a few people that don't, but we've actually made some changes to it recently. So, so these are our older gussets that were on the frames before V2s. They're symmetrical about the middle. We'd only have 
we had, we had three different sizes, like small, medium and large, and we fitted whichever one fitted best to the particular frame we were making. Um, going forward, we've gone with these new ones that are asymmetrical. They're a slightly more aesthetic design. Um, they're actually, they're the same width across the middle, so they provide the same kind of stiffness. So it's the same design solution, just a little bit more aesthetic, and it, it makes the bike look a bit more swoopy, I suppose. So the only other thing I'll do, I'll just show you, this is one of our um, stainless steel frames that we get made in Taiwan. These actually have the plate, the, the doubler type gusset. Um, the reason they do that is kind of, Taiwan are actually quite conservative in what they do. I think people believe that the Taiwanese just make what they're told. They don't, they have a lot of design experience. Um, but they've never done frames, the company we use have never done frames with that plate type gusset. So because they've never done it, they actually refuse to do it on our frames, which is not because it's not a good design solution, but just they haven't got the experience and they're conservative and they don't like doing stuff they've never done before. So our stainless frames don't have it. Both, both solutions are good. You know, we've had no issues with head tubes on any of our frames, but personally, I think that the plate type gusset so again, get on like this. I think this is the best kind of solution. Um, there's only one other little issue with these. We, we have fully external cable routing on our bikes. Um, it is neater on our bikes to run the cables through the back of the head tube gusset, but then that is sort of like a um, means, it's okay for your, your derailleur, but for your, brakes you sometimes well you have to break the you have to unscrew the brake hose to pull it through that hole but if that's a real problem for you you can always run it outside of the gusset so you know i for years i ran them outside the gusset when i was racing just in case it was you know you needed to change a brake but that's it really so hopefully now you understand why we've done these um and hopefully you love them because they're so beautiful and pretty with the little birdies